Hi, good morning. Thank you for coming on time. I hope you had a restful, relaxing weekend. This week's film is Drive, which was released in theaters in 2011. It was shot around in Los Angeles and around the city of Los Angeles in September of 2010. It had a nice, sizable budget of $15 million and went on to be an unexpected success, grossing around $81 million with about 10 million euros of that done just in France because the film won the Palme d'Or at Cannes, at the Cannes Film Festival for Best Director. It wasn't really received well at the Oscars. It was nominated for one of the Oscars for sound, but otherwise the director, the actors, the script writer were not considered probably unjustly so. Today we will start by looking at watching the initial sequence and there you see something about what the movie was intended to be and how it changed. Because in the meat of the first decade of the 2000s, a big shot producer read a review, a positive review of a novel by James Salis with the same title, Drive, and bought the rights to the novel to make it a kind of traditional action thriller. For example, initially they thought of Hugh Jackman. And if you stay long enough with the ending credits, you will see that Hugh Jackman is being thanked by the production because he let go of this project eventually. But when the film was assigned to Danish director Nicholas Venten uh, uh, Refn, who had done a few movies, but none of this size, none with such a big crew. Just for example, to give you a sense of how big the film was, there were 40 people, a staff of 40, just to work on the design of the set. And they did the apartments. So instead of uh, finding a, a place, they did the apartments. It, they might have taken an abandoned building and built the apartments of the two protagonists, the female and the male lead. They did or heavily modified a place for the uh, auto shop of Shannon, another important character. They did the elevator, which is, so they read it an elevator because uh, it was important for a series of scenes. But as I said, instead of being a traditional Hollywood action film with car chases and you find one at the beginning in the hands of the Spanish director became an existentialist neo-noir all based on vibes on the atmosphere on the visuals on scenes where there is limited dialogue and that is certainly true of the initial sequence and a film based a lot on colors. Not only the contrast in colors and light between the scenes at night, which reveal one side of the main character who's unnamed the driver, played by Ryan Gosling, and the scenes shot during the day when Ryan Gosling's character is quite different in the way he relates to other people. A milder, a tamer version 
of <clears throat> and then on top of that you do have violence but it's not really traditional hollywood film violence rather it's expressionist violence it's explosive and even there even when you see blood and there is quite a bit of blood in this film it's vivid red blood tomato sauce blood which is an intentional choice not to be realistic in the color of blood which of course is darker because that color has to be a vehicle for the communication of a theme so the initial sequence is based on a rather conventional cinematic trope, the car chase, the cops against the robbers, with our protagonist played beautifully by Ryan Gosling, being able to escape the police thanks to his skills. However, within this stale kind of situation, both the script and the director saved the day presenting the scene with different camera angles by choosing not to include lines, virtually no lines during the car chase. Of course, you hear the background noises, you hear, instead of the lines, you hear the police chatter because the police cars know that a robbery is going on and then they're looking for the car, a car that is in question, according to a line in the film, meaning that they suspect the car might have to do with this robbery. So everything is as expected in terms of the outcome and the execution but everything is done very originally. And then after that, the film, as you will see, will continue to play with tropes that you find in typical Hollywood movies, giving them a different angle, both in terms of the story and in terms of the visuals from the camera shots to especially the colors, which is why as I will show you later or Wednesday, in the instructions for your viewing notes that are due on this film at the end of the week, I told you not to focus too much on the story, which is simple, slim, as it is common with film noir. This is a neo-noir. Neo-noir <laughs> because even the treatment of black and the dark colors of the night is different from a traditional noir film such as Detour, right? With the shades giving you the sense of mystery and unexpected outcomes. Clearly, this film is different and there are a lot of scenes shot during the day, but even those scenes, you can see that the colors are off. The skies are never blue, but there is a lot of blue bright, vivid blue, and vivid reds in the interior scenes, and then in other scenes shot outside, the colors might be uh, more golden colors for, for scenes suggestive of happiness. But there is a lot that the film does with colors instead of relying on lengthy dialogue. So for the initial sequence that we're going to watch now, follow, focus your attention on the lack of dialogue lines past the initial scene where we see the protagonist on the phone talking about this robbery and his particular role as the getaway driver in the robbery, but past that in the actual scene of following the, the robbery with the chase, see what they do, how they try to execute this differently from what you expect, because usually these scenes are rather conventional, these kinds of sequences, 
And what they try to add in terms of a movie with a sizable budget is simply beautiful cars, uh, fast uh, uh, driving, uh, and explosions, and shots, shots being fired, right? This is the usual way a Hollywood movie will make it different from the other similar situations. And this is not what happens here. Focus on the visual space and the attention that is given to the face of Ryan Gosling from different angles, often from the, the footwell of the passenger's side or the side of the car. See how much the character looks in control in that kind of situation, because later, when you see the same character during the day, he behaves differently. His face is different. And what will happen him, to him during the day, which is he will have an almost random encounter at a small supermarket with a neighbor who's Carrie Mulligan, playing the character of Irene and her son in the film Benicio. And he will feel something for them, not just for her. It's not a love story. It's about a lonely character dreaming or pretending he could have a regular family, a, a loving family around him and play the role of the loving father to this kid because he himself grew up in an abusive kind of family and then in a foster family until he left with his clothes, no money, and just the car, according to what you find in the novel. So see how the, the try to see the complexity of this character even in the initial sequence. And after that, we'll talk more about the film. As usual, if you can please lower the curtains in the back so we can see more of the film, more details. And this is the initial sequence following the credits actually following the production frames before the credit. Platt is the producer who secured the rights to the novel drive, and Vintin Rafna is the Danish director. So you understand what they've done in a way that is not so showy because that is what he is during the day and even more at night. He's been able to escape the police just accelerating twice during the sequence instead of having a long sequence at high speed as you would have expected from more conventional films and then finding refuge in what he's seeking for in real life, anonymity, right? Because they park in a garage near the Los Angeles Convention Center with the arena where the basketball game has just ended and therefore thousands of people are coming out and both he and the criminals will be able to simply blend in. The police eventually will find the car, but the car will not reveal much about them and he's able to escape. What we will see in the following scenes is a continuation of this, because we've seen the personality of the character already. So he goes to a new place, because you saw the suitcase he had packed. In anticipation for this crime, he's changing his address, just in case. So he goes to a new place, which is a new apartment, almost empty, and on his way to the elevator, he will meet Carrie Mulligan Irene, which will become 
the, the object, the target of a small romance or romantic dreams, because they will kiss only once in the film, in the elevator, but only when their love is clearly impossible and impossibility. And, but you will see him going back to the streets at night with his own car, this old Chevelle Malibu from the 1970s, of course, restored and modified, because being in the car at night gives him serenity, gives him a sense of balance. He's out in the world, but no one is looking at him because his car has a very dull color, is not a, a very famous showy kind of muscle car, probably you, you've never seen it. Still, the engine is a powerful engine and he is an exceptional driver. So it's just driving through the rest of the night because that is where he can be in control, where he can be himself. And then he goes back at the end of the scene, is visibly tired, he goes back to the apartment meeting, crossing with Irene, who works as a waitress, again. And perhaps if there is time, I can show you when they meet at the supermarket. Basically, what this song is telling you, which matches the theme of the romance in the film, is that the night is the space and the time where he can be himself, but is very lonely. And as the lyrics suggest, he will end up inviting her to share the night with him. Not share the night, sharing his bed in a sexual way, but sharing his night drives. And later on, he will see the two of them driving at night, which is his way of bringing her into his most private, most personal world. And this is done with the lyrics of the songs a lot in this film, especially in reference to this beautiful song, which is a real hero, a song that is originally based on two things, the character in Mad Max, which will be one of the Mad Max films, will be next week's films, and also real hero, part of the lyrics are inspired by the airplane pilot who landed his plane in the Hudson, saving 155 passengers, if you remember, during the early 2000s. His name was Solenberg. I, I put a link to the article on him. So pay attention to the lyrics also. And of course, the same way that the first place you saw him at during the phone call was pretty anonymous, the second place is also very anonymous. And through the movie, you will not see him put in much furniture or anything that is more personal. He wants to be anonymous the same way that while driving at night, and this is rendered visually through the helicopter shots, is just one of the cars, one of the many cars, and no one gives him or his car a second look. And this is the same character during the day. What is his life during the day? He works, and this plays on the theme of anonymity again. He works as a stunt double. So he's not only a stunt driver, but a stunt double, that is to say, playing the scene in lieu of a star, an actor, right? Playing some kind of dangerous scene. So once again, his own identity cannot come out. On top of that, in this kind of environment, you see that he has to execute the orders of others. So he's more in control as a criminal, in his criminal nocturnal life, as a gateway driver. Also in control because from the phone call, you hear, heard that he was telling the criminals what he was going to do. I'm going to wait for you five minutes, no more than five minutes. I'm going to take you from point A to point B. No, in this kind of life during the day, he, he doesn't have that kind of power. At night, he's in control 
and you sit in his face. During the day, he has this naive, plain smile that he has to use to interact with others. And in terms of the questions that remain unanswered for this film, I think the key question is, is he someone who was traumatized as a child growing up in this abusive family? Or has he become indeed a psychopath? Put in a face during the day, but being very dark inside, because the same way that he drives cars which are dull, don't attract attention, but have this kind of explosive power under a hood, he can be explosive and become violent, go from zero to blood, zero to murder in the space of a few seconds. So there is this analogy of the car that doesn't attract attention, but can be very powerful, and his own explosive personality. Once again, notice the shots, the odd angles, because in film noir, is all about the sense that something is off. And these odd angles express that in real life. And you will see his friend Shannon from the shop, because Shannon has a shop that prepares cars for Hollywood films, and Shannon has a broken leg because that's the visual representation that every character, symbolic that every character in the film is broken. Shannon is broken in a physical way. A mafia guy broke his pelvis because Shannon asked for too much money, was, was uh, inflating the costs of making cars for a film financed by the mafia, the West Coast mafia, and the other characters, the driver, Irene Curry Mulligan, are broken inside, essentially. And like many other film noirs, a film noir is about the impossible, about second chances. And right when you see the possibility of a second chance in life, second chance at a family, second chance at love, at a career, at success, at fulfillment, that chance is taken from you suddenly. And, and it's ironic. It's not tragic, it's ironic. It's life that is playing with you. Right when you had given up, and clearly someone who's given up on life doesn't have any hopes. Right when you've given up on any kind of satisfaction in life, there you have the prospect of romance, a family, a career, because he'll be offered a chance to drive in a NASCAR team. But all of that comes to a sudden dramatic halt before the end of the film, which is also common to the crime dramas of the 1930s and 40s in Hollywood. When in Hollywood you couldn't have a successful criminal, someone who through crime can find happiness, instead of being moralistic, the best crime dramas of the 1930s and 40s became not a criminal who finds punishment for his bad <clears throat> deeds. Rather, they became films about missed chances for redemption. With criminals, clearly were guilty, found seemingly a chance, an opportunity to do something else with their lives, but before they can grab that chance. They die, they're arrested, etc., etc. Something goes terribly wrong. So let's see him in his day life, his day job, which is a quite different side of his personality. So focus your attention on that. Almost to the point where you can think he's a psychopath. And now, this is the supermarket, the small supermarket where he will meet with Irene and Benicio. Notice two things. One is the vivid colors, right? Look at the explosion of reds. All of a sudden, red was present before, just hints of red. But here and in the following scenes, a lot of red, which will be then translate in blood, but blood with the same color, okay? Notice also the blues blue on his pants and shirts, which you will then see in the shops of Shannon, which was painted by the stage designer. 
And uh, notice that he will see Irene and Benicio and then go another way. So he's trying to avoid any kind of involvement because being involved with others makes him less solitary, but also less ex more exposed. And he wants to be alone so that he can be in control because any kind of involvement makes his life chaotic and more difficult to control. Then he goes to the parking lot. You will notice small details count in a big production film that the door to his car is slightly open. Like, as if only the, you know, the, do the doors of cars have two locks, right? If you close it, entirely shut it closed, then both locks engage. If you push it, likely one of the locks only will engage and the car, the door will be slightly open. So you will see the door that is slightly open. What does it mean? It means that he, during the day, is not so organized, not so much in control, that his life is not so neat. It's a small element of chaos. And the big element is the woman herself. Because in the parking lot, she, she will be by her car because the car is smoking, not starting. And he will decide to get involved. He will take them home because they live together, right? They live in the same building. So through this involvement, his life unravels. And chaos will become, by the end, the dominating element in his life. Because through the involvement with her and the kid, especially the kid, he will decide then to sacrifice himself for them. So notice the color, notice the way, just by moving, without lines, you tell an entire story of this encounter and the chances and the risks involved in the encounter. Keep in mind, this apartment was made entirely by stage designers. Notice the colors. Again, a lot of oranges, red, and a lot of green, but also a light around the character that is quite different. He will be shot against the green light green uh, uh, wallpaper. She will be shot against bright orange tiles. So already you see where the vitality comes from. And later on, when her husband, Standard Gabriel, comes back from prison and he's beaten up by uh, Russian or Albanian thugs because he owes them money and he helps Benicio and Stander come back to the apartment and clean up in the bathroom, it's like it's a completely different place because the treatment of the colors is completely different. So not as vivid. These are the vivid colors that signify the beginning of a romance and maybe a chance at happiness. At the same time, these colors are so vivid that you still feel that something is off, right? That this is not something that will go as planned. And the relationship starts with the driver and Benicio, the kid, first, and then her. Because it's about family, not simply about romance between a man and a woman. small line and everything else is just about their body acting. You should know that about myself, meaning I'm not always in control when it comes to the regular life. And notice his face, which is quite different from his night face when he plays the part of a getaway driver dealing with criminals. Okay? Now, he will take them. Let's see what happens after that. We still have a few minutes. 